Let's put the Woogle on a Synology NAS. If you don't know what the Woogle is, it is a self-hosted search engine. So I'm just going to go to woogle.io and then click. I don't know if this is their official site or not, but if you just Google their GitHub, you can find it pretty easy. So view on GitHub. And we are in the official Woogle GitHub page. And you can tell that it's pretty official. We got 8.7 thousand stars. So that's pretty good. Um, if I scroll down, you can see the benefits of self-hosting your own search engine. So if you just come down a little bit for the features, there's no ads or sponsored content, no JavaScript, no cookies. A lot of technical stuff here, but it sounds good. So sounding good is good to me. It's good enough for me. Remember, I'm a hobbyist. I'm not a working IT professional. So I'm going to scroll down to the section where it says install options and then click on Docker. So we're going to install this using Docker. And actually, I can ignore most of this. So ensure the Docker daemon is running. As long as you've got Docker installed on your NAS, it's probably running, unless you turned it off. Um, yeah, we don't really need to worry about any of this. Clone and deploy the Docker app using the method below, but you don't have to worry about any of this. So I am just going to get their, get their Docker Compose file. So I'm going to scroll back up to where all the files are and click on docker-compose.yaml, not the Traffic one. If you've got Traffic and you're all fancy like that, you can use the Traffic version, but I am not. I'm just going to click on Docker Compose. I use linuxserver.io's um, swag proxy. That is actually what, that is my choice of reverse proxy. So I don't use traffic. Not that it's bad. I've never tried it. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to copy all of this. And I can just use the copy raw file and that'll copy all that text. You can also just highlight it all if you want. Depends on how you're feeling. So I'm going to go back to my Synology NAS. Actually, not back because I haven't been here with you guys yet. Welcome to the Synology NAS. And to install your own self-hosted search engine, all you need is Container Manager, which if you don't have, you can just go into the Package Center. You can type in Container Manager, and it'll show up. Just click on the Container Manager app and hit Install if you don't already have it. If it's not showing up for you in the App Store, that means it is not available on your Synology model. Um, but maybe Google around and see if others have gotten it to work. So let's pop into Container Manager. So in Container Manager, we're going to click on Project, and we're going to create a new project. And I'm going to call this guy Woogle, not to be confused with Google, which also exists. And then for Path, let's create a path for all these files. I'm going to click on File Station, go into the Docker share, which you should have when you install Docker. And I'm going to create a folder called Woogle. But you can call your folder whatever you want. You could call it Google. I don't know if that's copyright infringement or not. I'm going to close out of here. So I'll set path in Docker and then click on Google. Check it out. Never deleted my Heimdall folder. Select and then under source, we're going to create a Docker Compose file and just paste in all that text that we got from the GitHub page. Just do the old copy raw file and paste it in here. So we don't need to make too many changes here. Let's scroll down here. If you've never used Docker Compose before, first off, Congratulations, this is very exciting. And this is probably a little confusing to look at compared to some of the other ones that I've done. Let's scroll down here. There's a couple of changes you can make if you want. I probably wouldn't touch any of this stuff right now, but you can change the PIDs limit, which you can Google that because I cannot explain what it is. There is a memory limit of 256 megs and a memory swap limit of 256 megs. I think that will be good for any Synology NAS. I don't think Google takes hardly nothing as far as resources go. So we'll scroll down and I'm just going to make one change and that is under ports. 5000 cannot be used on a Synology NAS because your Synology NAS is already using this port most likely. And even if it's not, you should leave 5000 open anyways. It is the default port for Disk Station Manager. So I'm gonna change this to something else. I'm gonna change it to 15,000. That'll work, I'll just add a one in front and that will work. You should know this is where you can make a couple changes. So if you see these pound signs or hashtags, whatever you want to call them, if you uncheck them, you'll see everything becomes red, and that means you can actually use it. Uh, you can't use all of them. But for example, if I wanted to create a Google user and password, I could do that here. I can just delete those. Yeah, I can just delete the pound signs, and that should enable users and path passwords if you happen to need that authentication. That's probably the biggest thing that you might want to do here. I am not going to do that because I don't need that. They do have instructions on here too. So if you're going to enable any of these sections, first you have to make sure that environment is enabled. Oh god, I hit the wrong key and it went way off. Delete key, okay. So you would need to make sure that environment does not have a pound sign in front of it anymore, and then you can start to add in usernames and passwords and configure anything down here that you would like to do. But I'm going to keep this one fairly basic, so we're not going to do any of that. I'm going to uncheck or I'm going to comment out, as they say, environment and user and password. 
I don't have to worry about any of this stuff. This is not trying to, I don't think this is trying to link to any folders on our machine. It's um, temporary file stuff. So yeah, but we're all set up to go. This should install Google and you will have your own, you have your own search engine. So I'm gonna click next. I'm not going to use a web portal via web station. I will leave that unchecked and click next and then start the project once it is created and I'll click done. And we're gonna be installing the Google, which should be pretty quick. It's definitely not a very large download. And there we go, we got an exit code zero, which is exactly what you want. And then project Google was successfully built. So I can close out of here. While you're in the screen, you can, if you're, you can just click on project, double click Google. Oh no, I clicked on too many things. Project, double click Google, and then click on YAML configurations. And if you ever need to edit any of this stuff, if you decide you want to make any changes here, you can just click stop up here in the upper right hand corner. I will say the first time I launched this, I actually got an error about the PIDs limit saying that Synology cannot support that. So I don't know what changed between now and then. I didn't seem to get that error. But if you get that, I think you can ignore that. I'm not sure if it's a huge deal or not. Um, you could if you really wanted to. You can also delete that. But And it should still work. But remember, I'm just a hobbyist, not a security expert, and I'm not sure of the ramifications of doing something like that. But let's go to Google. So we changed that first port number here. If you're a little bit confused by this, this is how we access Docker programs on a Synology NAS. So this first number is a port number that we're going to use to gain access to the program that we just installed. The second number here, you typically don't have to worry about. With port numbers, you're typically not going to be changing the one after the second colon. Sometimes you might, but in most cases you don't. So what we're going to do to access this is type in the IP address of our Synology NAS colon 15,000, 15000. Or you can do like I do, I just have the name of my Synology NAS dot local. First, if you don't know the name of your NAS or the IP address, you can just click on widgets and then make sure that system health is checked and you'll have your IP address right here and the name of your Synology NAS. So you can type in the name of your Synology NAS dot local and then colon 15,000. That should bring you to Google or type in the IP address colon 15,000. The other thing you need to make sure is by default, I'm on HTTPS. I have to change this to HTTP because this is not set up for HTTPS. And then I'll type in 15,000 and we can get into Google and we're all set and check it out, Google GitHub. Here it is, look at that, first option. And it's all private and secured and there's no JavaScript and cookies or anything. So I guess it makes you being able to be tracked a lot more difficult. If you don't like the color scheme, check it out. You got plenty of options. Actually, sorry, this is not for option. If I go to the home page and then click on configuration, I can make a bunch of changes. So you can put in your country, time period. Um, country, I think, will help with the search results that you get. Same with the languages. And then, yeah, if you want to say that you're near a city, that can also help with some of your search results. The theme, you can do dark or light. They also have a section on here. Let me go back to their GitHub. I believe they have a section for themes. Yeah, so if I just search for theme somewhere, not yeah, under features, light dark system with support for custom CSS theming, you can go through and add in any of these themes. So I'm gonna do rose pine. Yeah, rose pine. I'm gonna copy this text and under custom CSS, I'll paste all of that and click apply. Oh, check it out. I've got a new Google color system. This one, it looks a little more cohesive than the other one. If I type in volume data 21, what happens if I Google volume data 21? I should never do that. It's just my YouTube channel. Oh man, look at that. I'm on my YouTube channel. You're watching me on my YouTube channel. That's probably confusing. But yeah, there you go. You've got Google installed. So if you want to access your custom search engine, just remember you can only access it while you're on your network. Or you can go back to my networking 101 and 102 video and kind of get an idea of how a VPN works. So then you could put TailScale on your Synology NAS, connect your phone and laptop and computers to TailScale, and you can access Google that way. So that is a great way of accessing it for when you're not at home. But if you're at home, you can just use, you know, the machine name method or IP address to access Google. You can change that IP, sorry, you can change that port number to pretty much anything you want up to like 64,000. There's a couple that are taken though, so be careful of that. You can't use 80 or 443. But yeah, that's about all that I got for installing Google. Pretty painless install and a cool way of getting into search engines. If you're looking for other options out there, probably the most well-known one is called, I was about to search for this without Google. Search for here, it's called Seer XNG. And I'm not gonna tutorial on that yet because I think it's a little bit more complex, but if you wanna get into the weeds on a search engine, Seer XNG is another awesome one to take a look at. But yeah, hopefully you were able to install that and now you can browse with some privacy ease. Good luck to you.